Are you looking for a fun project that's on the small side that lets you play with your quilting skills or you could consider a skill builder for quilting? Well, I have the perfect thing for you and it's right over here behind me and it is uh, the newest project that I sewed over the weekend. So stick around, I'm gonna tell you all about it. Hi and welcome to my channel. I'm Patty and I can buy Patty Mac makes everywhere online. Welcome to my handmade lifestyle and my sewing space. On this channel we like to do all things analog, so sewing, knitting, baking, gardening, all those fun things. And if you're also interested in all these great handmade activities, then I invite you to like today's video and subscribe to the channel. It's really fun here and you'll learn boatloads of cool stuff, but we don't really go out in any boats exactly, so. Okay, let's talk about this beautiful bag that is behind me. I made this over the weekend. <laughs> to be perfectly honest, it took me like four evenings to get through the whole process. It was more sewing than I expected, but I loved it so much. I'm really proud of it, and I, I'm gonna make another one, <laughs> just to be honest with you. This bag is called the Reversible Tiki Tote Pattern, and it is a free pattern on Blueprint. I will provide you the link below. I first found out about this project through the Midnight Quilt Show uh, about a year and a half ago. She did um, a collaboration with Vanessa from Crafty Gemini and they exchanged uh, fabric and each one of them made a bag project from the other's uh, favorite fabric stash. So um, this ba bag is based on the project made by Midnight Quilt Show. So I've been looking at it for a while. I really wanted to do it and I just finally said I'm doing it. I carved out the time. I just, I gave myself permission to not do anything else for a couple of days and I worked on the bag. I already had the uh, jelly rolls in my stash and I thought I've already got fabric and stash to make this so I'm gonna go ahead and do it. If you don't know, a jelly roll is a quilting product and it looks like this. So it's uh, strips of fabric that are cut into uh, two and a half inch widths and they're all the same length and you get a certain number of strips and they roll them in this little uh, handy dandy um, bundle and they call it a jelly roll. They come in different sizes. Uh, this is the smaller size and you can basically expect these to run about $15. Um, they have uh, large ones that you can buy from um, bigger um, quilters online like Missouri Star has them they're almost $40 but they're um, higher end fabric and they're twice as much fabric as this so this is a smaller size jelly roll I got mine in Joann's a year or so ago maybe I don't know it's been a while I've had uh, this jelly roll actually had two of them in my stash for quite some time and I got them because they were marked way down. They were $7 or $7.50 for the jelly roll. Uh, plus I got another 20% off. So they were very inexpensive for me when I got them. Um, this one I got uh, this past weekend on sale. It was like $6. Uh, so that was a good price. It was a doorbuster. So I didn't get any other... Uh, discounts on it and I got it because I knew that from my bag lining I already had uh, polka dot fabric here in my stash that I can use uh, so I didn't have to you know buy anything else for the lining. They uh, bill this as a reversible pattern but I personally would just use this as my exterior. Um, I went ahead and sewed um, like a little um, pocket on the inside. I'll show you a better shot of that. I, I would just keep it as one-sided. So let's talk about the bag. The bag is constructed from uh, different panels that you're going to make. It's called a braid pattern in quilting. So you're going to construct eight panels of the braid 
and then you're going to sew four and four to make a front and a back panel. You put those panels together, you make your strap, you make your bag lining, and you put it together. <laughs> and um, as bag making goes, it is a pretty basic design. Um, what I think is fun about this is that you get to experiment with quilting without having to make a gigantic quilt. I find the idea of making a full-sized um, quilt more than a little overwhelming. It feels like a lot. And uh, I'm kind of space challenged <laughs> in my um, sewing room, so to make a quilt that would fit my whole bed feels really like a lot. With a bag like this, I get to play with making quilt blocks. I get to put them together. I get to enjoy that whole uh, crafty construction um, process that is part of quilting without it being uh, massive. And I get a really great bag that I can use on a daily basis. Uh, this is going to be like a shopping bag. It's it's a nice size bag. It's a good tote. So yeah, if I go to Joann's to shop, this is going to be the shopping bag. I, I wouldn't put frozen food in it or things like that, but dried goods, um, anything like that, I think it's going to be great for. It's a great beach bag. I mean, you know, whatever you need a bag for, it's a good bag. So I used a combination of the written pattern, which is a free pattern. I will link to that for you below. I used a combination of that free written pattern as well as the video from Midnight Quilt. And um, I feel like the video really rushes through the process. Uh, if you're comfortable with sewing and putting things together, you can follow it pretty well, but if you haven't done anything like this, I, I think it's a little hard to follow uh, because she moves through it so quick. And that is my ongoing beef with Blueprint. Uh, the newer content is um, very fast moving. It's designed to be more of uh, an entertainment video than an educational video. Um, that's just how Blueprint operates. It's owned by NBC. NBC is a TV station that, that makes entertainment programming, and so that's what they're doing with uh, Blueprint. I still think Blueprint is well worth the money because of the access to the old Craftsy library. So anything that you're stuck on uh, in terms of the newer content, you can dig back through and find a really great Craftsy class that will explain everything. So I just renewed my blueprint. I love it. I would, I, I can't imagine not having it because the old library is so full of such great information. The new projects are fun, but I find that I need those older skill builder videos in order to make the new projects. And that was certainly true of uh, this project. If I hadn't have done the uh, zipper bag class that I think is an excellent class and made uh, her both zipper bags and the tote bag, I would have really been lost on this project, honestly. This would have blown my mind. I sewed this project on both my Singer sewing machine and my Kenmore. I have outfitted the Kenmore with a walking foot and this is the first time that I've used that walking foot attachment. I was always really afraid of it. It just sounded so important, like, ooh, the walking foot, and I was just kind of scared of it. It's no big deal. <laughs> it was fine. I installed it myself. I got it running. It, it was great, and I got a really nice quilted result using it. So uh, I think anytime you're going to use uh, something that is thicker, like quilt batting and a backing, you definitely should use the walking foot attachment. When I was ready to uh, put the quilt batting on, which I used a fusible quilt batting, I got that on sale, it was on sale this weekend for um, five, $5.50 a yard. I went ahead and got two yards of it. Two yards is quite a bit of quilt batting for the type of projects I like to make, so that will last me a while. I will give you a tip that uh, if you're going to buy interfacing and quilt battings and that type of stuff, and you do shop Joann's, only buy it when they have it as a doorbuster sale. Uh, kind of keep track of what is in your uh, stash, and when you're starting to run low on those items, 
watch Joann's and see when it's on sale. Only buy it when it's 50 or 60% off. Otherwise, it's just too expensive. When I was ready to do the quilting part of the bag, I made a small braid. This is actually two panels. And these were left over from the original Jelly Roll. And I fused the batting, I trimmed it down, and then I went ahead and used the walking foot to quilt that center panel, which you can see on the back. And I was super happy with the result, and I went ahead and did all of the panels that way. So I sewed all of my braids, I trimmed them, I uh, then sewed panels together, so this is two panels, and then um, fused to the quilt batting and then trimmed everything neatly. And um, for the bag, it's four panels on each side, so four panels. And then uh, I also made um, this uh, band around the top, and I sewed four pieces together there. And uh, once this panel of four braids was constructed, I sewed this particular panel on, <laughs> and uh, then uh, did fusible quilt bat batting to the entire section. And I did film uh, some video during the making process, so let's go take a, a peek at some of that. This braid I'm constructing just exactly the way that they recommended in the, um, the pattern I'm following. Uh, so the next version I make, it's going to be a little bit different, but I'm following their pattern. I'm going to make it the way they recommend. And so what they say is you need uh, 13 pieces. And so the way that I have been doing this is I uh, pick a color and I uh, just pick one to start and lay it out. And then I pick something to go with it. So I won't go with that. And I try to just, you know, be really random about it. And I had extra of the white. So I've been trying to throw a little extra white in there. And why don't we go with the pink? And uh, all I'm doing is uh, putting, putting colors together. That's it. Until I get 13. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Thirteen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Okay, so I have them all in a line, and now what we're going to do is take these and make our braid. So I come to this side of my sewing table, and I take the first one, and then the second one. And all I'm doing is laying out the braid. And I'm just pulling them from And, you know, this is not perfect. We're just trying to see how these pieces go together. And, you know, this is just the way that I found to do this. Okay. So you lay them all out, and then what you do is you look, and you, you what you notice, first of all, is that well, we've got two whites going this way and two purples going that way. So that doesn't really work for me. So um, we're going to take this purple and take it out and put it down here. And uh, let's see, then we don't want to have two whites in so close together. So uh, maybe what we'll do is put a pink up here and put a white down here. And then it just feels like a better distribution of your colors. And then we'll just look at that and see if we like that for our braid. And I, th I think that works. I like that. Uh, okay, so then you look at it and you think, oh, well, this with these two dark values on the same side. Oh, and also the blue. So let's switch the black. Okay, and then, and then we look at it, and yeah, I think that's a really good distribution. 
that's your your perfectly planned random distribution but I mean you can see you don't think about it too much you just kind of put the things down and uh, lay them out and now we'll just uh, stitch them up I got one panel constructed last night and you can see that this panel is made from um, four of those braids and then for this uh, top piece I took four pieces and stitched those together and uh, yeah, it was it was fun. I had a little bit of tension issue with the, my sewing machine, but uh, you know what? It's all right. I'm I'm moving forward. And then over here, uh, two other braids, and here's the back, which I think is really cool. So you can see all of the uh, seams are uh, pressed to go um, towards the point. It looks really cool on the back side. So this is just a stitched braid. It still needs to be trimmed, uh, but I've got two more to sew. And uh, yeah, then when I get all four of them sewn, I'll trim them down, I'll stitch those together, and then we'll put our um, top on, and then we'll have two outside panels. And then uh, we can use the fusible batting, and I'm gonna uh, just lightly quilt. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is stitch in the ditch here, just on that line. I think that's plenty. I'll probably do across here and down here. And I, I think that's enough. I definitely recommend the project. Um, make sure that you are subscribed to the channel. You have this notification bells on because I'm going to um, sew the braid pattern for you. I'm going to show you my suggestion for how to get nice even uh, panels and how to make sure all of your braids are cut exactly. Even though I was so careful in how I trimmed and of course I used my uh, quilting ruler, I counted everything, I measured everything, I was so careful. I still wound up having one panel uh, differently sized than the other panel. And it was okay, I was able to cut it down and it fit, but then I wound up with a lining that I'd already sewn that was a little too big. That was kind of an issue. So, uh, yeah, when I restitch, there's going to be um, a different method <laughs> that I use to get even braids. And uh, I will wait to cut my bag lining uh, after I have completely constructed the exterior of the bag and have the final measurements. At that point, I will then use the actual bag exterior to cut my bag lining. Then I know everything will line up perfectly. You can be surprised sometimes when you're doing projects like this that have all of these moving parts. When I say moving parts, I mean all of the cutting and sewing. Even though you're super careful about how you cut and measure, you could still be surprised when it comes time to put things together that they don't fit exactly like you planned. That's why I don't do <laughs> these big, complicated quilts. Uh, I don't want to like do all that cutting and sewing and then wind up with something at the end that doesn't come together. With this pattern, it really doesn't matter because you don't have to line up at your braids. In fact, it's going to look more fun if they don't line up. It's kind of a crazy quilt pattern and um, you don't need everything lining up. Uh, I did get beautifully perfect boxed corners. I did the box corners differently than what they recommend in that pattern and video. I think it's a better way. I learned that in the other craftsy class. I thought it was more thorough and a much better way at getting your seams to line up because you want your seams to line up. If you can get uh, your seams to line up in terms of the boxing um, and you do a nice neat job in your quilting and all of that, your bag is going to look good no matter what. So uh, it gives you the opportunity to sew all of those little braids and to get in that uh, practice with the quilting without it being um, so critical that everything is perfect. So for me that is very freeing and I hope that you feel the same way. So we'll go ahead and um, get into more discussion on putting braids together and all of that later on. 
So another area that I uh, took my own creative license uh, to put this bag together was in the way that I made the strap. And with the strap, <laughs> I made uh, bag straps like I've always made bag straps, which is you, you cut the material, you fold it, you press it, and you fold it in, and then uh, it top stitched. So I thought that was um, a neater, easier way to um, construct the strap than taking two opposite pieces and then having to pull that whole thing through. Um, that seems like a lot, and then getting it to be crisp because I wanted you know nice crisp bag straps, and doing it that way really, I thought was an easier way to, to put those together. You could interface and then you'd have a really sturdy strap. So maybe the next go around, I'll interface my bag straps and try it out. Um, but I, I'm very happy with uh, this result. That's my review on the reversible Tiki Tote. I think it's a great project. I think if you want to dip your toe in that quilting pond, this is a great way to do so. Jelly roll strips take out the biggest part of the work, which is cutting the strips. You'll have to cut them to size, but uh, trust me, that's uh, a lot easier than having to cut all those long strips. So you can find yourself a jelly roll that you really like. You'll want to find a, a fabric that complements your jelly roll to use as your lining and as your bag straps. Uh, you want something, uh, it doesn't have to be specifically from that print. Uh, if you can find that, that's really nice. It doesn't have to be matchy-matchy that way. Uh, like mine was not matchy-matchy. I had this in my stash. But yeah, with a black and white, you know, that's going to go with any of this because this has black and white in it. And that worked really well. Um, polka dots are great. Mine is little triangles. And I thought that was kind of fun to go with the gold flex. This is a project that really lets you... Um, flex your creative muscles a little bit in a safe way. <laughs> so you're not gonna spend gobs and gobs of money um, to sew this project. I would say that if you uh, are thrifty about buying your items on sale, uh, you could make this project for maybe $15. And that's pretty good. That's a pretty good project. Uh, and you get the satisfaction of all of the sewing and all of the work with the quilting and I, I think it's hugely rewarding. So I definitely recommend it. I will link to the, the video from Midnight Quilt Show so you can see that. I'll also link over to my own blog post on this particular bag. Then you can see uh, more pictures of it. You can see it up close and as I uh, add to the sewing steps and all of that there will be more information. So make sure that you are subscribed and you don't miss all of that because I think it's going to be good and I think you will enjoy my approach to uh, sewing and piecing the braids. Okay, that's what I have for you. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that you found it helpful and uh, I'll just see you in the next video. Thanks and bye-bye.